It's a new week at the House of Tiny Tearaways. <laughs> no, don't you bite me! It must break your heart sometimes. I think she has really suffered because I looked inward for too long. Today, three new families will start their stay here at the House of Tiny Terraways, all of them in need of urgent help from Dr Tanya Byron. Three desperate families, each overwhelmed by parenting problems that have turned their children into terraways. They're going to be living here for just six days in the hope that they can turn their lives around forever. The person they're looking to for the answers is clinical psychologist Dr Tanya Byron. Working with three families in such an intense environment is unlike anything I've ever done professionally before and it is a huge challenge. I'm working with the parents, I'm working with their children and I'm building a community. It's a tough job to do in a very, very short space of time. The house itself has been built under the supervision of childcare experts to ensure that it's both a fun and safe place for kids. The house also recreates a realistic home environment to allow Tanya to observe the families behaving as naturally as possible. The remote cameras and those located behind two-way mirrors provide an unobtrusive way to see the pitfalls and progress. The tension and the tears. 24 hours a day. With just six days to solve their problems, Tanya's facing a massive challenge. And for the family selected to be part of this unique programme, this is Make or Break. This is the House of Tiny Tearaways, and this is the first family of the week, the McLeods. family hail from North Wales. Two years after the breakup of her parents' marriage, six-year-old Kira is causing mayhem. Stop it now! Stop! Back it no. 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 It's like being in a riot. Despite having a stressful job as a housing officer for vulnerable adults, 34-year-old mum of two, Paula, finds work a doddle compared to what she has to face at home. Kira, stop it! Kira is very, very clever. She knows exactly what buttons to press. And if hitting and kicking me doesn't work, that's when she comes out with all the nasty things that she says to me. Craig left us for somebody else. So... He doesn't even Once Dad Craig, a local policeman, comes over to visit his children, Kira's behaviour changes. No, Kira! I think the main problem is the difference in discipline between the two of us. You're a good boy, aren't you? Mm -hmm. I see. Mm -hmm. Shh, good boy, you take yours. OK? Paula seems to have this softly, softly approach, really, where she lets them away with things, thinking it's doing them good. But in the long term, she's having more problems with them, and deciding they're starting to run the house instead of her. My dad was very strict. If we did anything naughty, we either got the slipper or we got grounded. Um, however, um, I can't discipline my children like that. No! No! no. Anybody in here? 
here. No. It's only us. Yes. Oh, is this the? Ooh. Whoa, is this the whole of ours? Yeah. Is this all of ours? Yeah. No, we will yeah. be sharing it with other families. Yeah. Yeah. The first day in the house of Tiny Tearaways is observation day, a chance for Tiny to watch each family closely to find out where the root of their problems lie. No, not yet. Why do we have to have these? But and do we have to have them us. every day? Yeah. Mom, Everyone in the house is provided with their own microphone pack, but no, Kira has decided she doesn't want to wear hers. Put it back on, please. No. You've got to, because Aaron will end up taking his no. off. Mum, 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 Mum. Kira, put it back on. No. Put it back on. No. Kira, put it back on, please. Right. Aaron, can we? Yeah. Let me just do that. Um, come here. Uh, no, look, Aaron's copying you I'm now. Drawing. See, Aaron's copying <laughs> you. And it's not funny. <laughs> no, Aaron. <laughs> Kira, come on. No kicking. No kicking. Ah, Kira. Come on. No. Our first family of the McLeods. They haven't been in long. Mum Paula, daughter Kira, who's six, and Aaron, who's two and a half. What have you observed so far? Well, there hasn't been a massive tantrum, which is what we've seen on the profile tape and I've read about and we've heard through all our research. But definitely, already, I can see a very strained interaction between Paula and Kira. Very strained. It seems to me she's waiting. She's on the edge all the time, waiting for there to be an outburst. So much more clipped, much sharper, um, not so warm in her, in her style. Come on, Aaron. No, Aaron's going to be a good boy and sit with Mummy, aren't you? Should we draw? Mummy. Should we draw? Aaron, should we draw? <laughs> What we have to remind ourselves is here is a family where there's been a separation. Dad has access to the children, sees the children, but doesn't live in the family home anymore. Um, Mum, Paula, has been depressed for some time and was on medication. And there's a little boy who's two and a half. And I think it seems to me that this is a story about a child's response to a separation, a mother with depression and a new sibling. That's what I'm feeling. And I think she's confused and she's angry. Thank you. Oh, I would like it if you really <coughs> And I would appreciate it if you put your microphone on. No! If you want to shout me, it could be for Dad. Fine. Give it to Dad then if you want. There we go! Get off! <laughs> You're going to come and draw, Aaron? Yeah. Will you put your microphone on for Mummy? Yeah. Sorry, Mum. Oh, well, why are you saying sorry now? Sorry. Right, will you put your microphone on? Right. Yeah, I'm going to put it over my car. Paula. Hi. I'm Tanya Byron. Nice oh, to meet you. Hi, nice to meet you too. No. Who's this? Who are you? What's your Kira. name? Kira. You Hello, are. Kira. How are you? Hi. Uh, why don't you sit oh. over on this blue chair so I can no. see you do your drawing? <coughs> Will you draw me a picture of your family? Yeah. Would you? Okay. All right, thank oh. you. See. Do come and take a seat. Yeah. Tell me why you've decided to do this. It's such a big thing to do. Um, probably because I feel like I can't cope anymore and I'm, I'm feeling really embarrassed taking them out and it's come to light really now that I've started a, a, a newish relationship with somebody and I just feel if I don't get things sourced I'm going to drive people away. Right, and this new partner is finding the kids difficult or...? Um, it's me that's finding it difficult. Right. Um, 
I know he doesn't say much, but I feel embarrassed. So every time I'm with him, she hits me, she pulls my hair, and it's not nice for him to see that. Mm -hmm. And I just feel that and unless I, I sort this out now, it's going to get to a stage where she might be hitting the teachers. She started hitting the dad, which she's never done before. It, it's not really Aaron at all, is it? It's it's really Kira that's... Aaron's the night time where <laughs> I just can't have my bed to myself. So you, actually, you get no respite from any of this. They're with you all the time. No, demanding. Yes. What's the quality of your life like? I haven't got anything. Nothing? No, nothing at all. Um, and that's why hey, I think... Oh, sorry, Dan. Hey, sweetie, come and sit here. Wow, so let's just let's have a look at this now. Show me, fun. tell me, who's Papa that? Papa and Gran, Dad, Aaron, Herbs, me, Mum, Tidy, Nana. So, Daddy, Aaron, David, who's this? Me. You. Mummy. Mummy. Now, Mummy doesn't look very happy at all, does she? Does Mummy feel sad sometimes? Yeah, okay. And do you feel sad sometimes? When I'm sad, Mummy's sad. When you're sad, Mummy's sad. No, no. when Mummy's sad, I'm sad. Is that right? And what do you and Mummy do when you're both feeling sad? Sit together. Biggest. You sit together. And what would you like Mummy to feel all the time? Happy. Biggest. What do you think would make Mummy feel happy? By tickling her. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. when Mummy's feeling sad, are you doing anything that's making her feel sad? Mm. No. So who makes mummy Dad feel sad? Daddy. Daddy makes mummy feel sad. Why? Because he shouts at her. Because he shouts at her. Will you draw me a picture? Yeah. Please. Of... Doggies. My doggies. All right, darling. You go and do that for me while I talk to mummy, will you? Cool. All right, see you in a minute. <laughs> she's a good drawer. She's a very good drawer. <laughs> so, she says Mummy feels sad. Where does that come from? From what she's seen and heard? Yeah. It makes me feel bad. Makes you feel sad, actually, doesn't it? At least at work I get respected and I enjoy my work and I'm good at my work. At home I just don't want to be there because I'm not a good parent. I, 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 I can't deal with the children. How hard is it for you to say that out loud? I'm not a good parent. I don't know, because I've always said it. So you don't believe in yourself as a parent? No, I, 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 can't, I can't be a proper parent, because I don't know how to, how to um, deal with things. Every time I went to discipline Kira, he would take over that. So Kira's never listened to me anyway. Family means a lot to me. That family is never going to be together again, you know? And that's broken your heart? It has totally broken my heart. You know, I know I'm really happy with my, my new partner. He's absolutely brilliant with the children. He's fantastic with them. But I'll never get over the fact that I'm the only one in the family that's divorced, that we'll never be a complete family again, and... OK, all right. I'm really glad you've come here. Thank you. I think we can do a lot together. Do you think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know we can. I, I, I don't know what to do with myself. You know, I, I, I've lost all my confidence and I just don't know how to regain it again. Well, maybe that's one of the tasks we've got together for this week. Mm. Tackling Kira's behaviour in just six days is going to be a real challenge for Tanya, and it will only get tougher with the arrival of our second family, the Scots. Oh, look at this pretty arch that we're coming through. Isn't it wonderful? Bye. Yeah. Oh, there's a bucket swing. Bye. In Surrey, single mum Bridget Scott is having a battle of wills with her daughter Erin. I live in Byfleet with my son Tyler, who's five, and my daughter Erin, who's just turned three. Erin is why we're here. She doesn't eat anything other than um, like a baby oats, really, that's marketed for four-month-old babies, and she turned three about two weeks ago. She'll only eat this creamy oat porridge, and only this brand. 
with the silicone on there. So, but she's made progress because now she'll have fruit puree in it and she's tolerating different flavour. And I just make it up with formula so that she can have um, the vitamins from it. I don't know how much Down syndrome comes into it. I only know a, a, a few other people with children with Down syndrome and they don't have eating issues at all. You'd be expecting a child to be eating scaled down versions of adult food, not baby food. <laughs> Erin, you won't choke. You won't choke, sweetie. <coughs> Discovering Erin had Down syndrome was initially difficult for Bridget. Because I, I didn't, I had quite strong issues with people with special needs before. I used to be quite phobic about anybody if there was any sort of dribbling involved or anything like that. So I did think it was God's rather sick sense of humour giving me a child with Down syndrome. But now that it's happened, I realise actually it was the wisest thing that any God, whatever that type of God there is, could have done because I, I no longer have that phobia. Try as she might, Bridget is still struggling to find a solution to Erin's eating problems. When I talk about it, I do become quite despairing because I actually don't know how to fix it. And I have managed to fix everything in my life, but I can't fix this. Like all the families, the Scots are free to leave at any point. But Tanya is hoping that over the next six days, they'll put the necessary work in to treat their parenting problems and leave with a clear plan for the future. Hello, I'm Bridget. I'm Paula. Please Paula, hi. Yes. Hello, how this are we going here? Erin and Tyler. Oh, Erin and Tyler. This is Aaron. Erin. And this is Kira. Hello, Kira. Yeah. <laughs> We're just I can see you coming already. <laughs> Come here. Let's take your coat off. I'm going to take my wellies off because I've been in a puddle. That's Have a good you? idea. Was it, did you go in that big puddle outside? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. we nearly had that as well. We'll yeah. <laughs> get you a drink in a minute, Erin, OK? Yeah. Yeah. Well, the second family have arrived, the Scots, Mum Bridget, uh, daughter Erin and son Tyler. Quite a big eating problem mm. for a three-year-old Erin. How common would it be for a child who has Down syndrome to have some sort of eating problem or are they not linked at all? There may be some links in terms of musculature of the mouth and also the tongue in terms of feeding. But my hypothesis is that if she didn't have Downs, she'd possibly be a fussy eater anyway. But I think with Erin, there is the added issue of her Downs for mum, Bridget. And I think because Bridget feels so protective of her, feels she doesn't want her to have any unhappiness in her life because she fears that she will have unhappiness when she's older and she has, you know, to live in a world that may judge her more harshly because she's an adult rather than a sweet little girl. I think Bridget cannot say no and cannot set boundaries. And I think that's where the problem is. Hey, As the Scots settle into their new home, Tanya meets them for the Hello. first time. It's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you Hi. too. Hello. Hi. So Erin, um, she can't sort of do anything, can she? It's all completely safe. It's all built for children. The only things are the, the doors, but they do have things that make them close a bit, but the kids tend to suss that. Yeah. So, you're here because of feeding. Yes. Everything else you're fine with, happy with. Yeah, I mean, she's a defiant little madam, but I don't think anything that she's you know, a three-year-old wouldn't yeah. normally be doing. Yeah. But she's also, this, she's got a really nice sense of herself, and she's got a real sense of identity. I've just been watching, <laughs> since you've come in, I've just been watching you all the time. Oh, really? Because when I'm not with you, I watch you. All right. I suppose the headline is it's about feeding. Yes. And eating. And everything to do with food. Yes. Right. She used to be to the point where she wouldn't take bread to feed ducks. If it was anything to do with food, mm -hmm. um, she would play, wouldn't play with pretend food, it, a real anti-food thing, mm -hmm, you know. Mm -hmm. um, now she's not so bad. She will touch food. Mm -hmm. Right. So. Okay. And she eats, but a very restricted diet. Very restricted. Just baby oats. Right. Uh, kind of four month old. Oats with a, with a fruit puree, right? With, you know. Mm -hmm. So, and what else does she eat? Nothing. Right? Does she drink water or no, juice? No. Or? So it's just this porridge, oats, and fruit puree. Is she self feeding? No. 
Because she can't or she won't. Won't. Right. <laughs> Your face. <laughs> won't. Okay. <laughs> well, I just don't want anyone to think that she can't because no. she blimmin' well can. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's, she just won't. She's Is it naughty. a battle of wills? Yeah, she's naughty. Yeah. Right, okay. <laughs> so, what... Will you go and check on Erin for me, please? She's been very quiet. <laughs> <laughs> what what we're saying here is Erin is a little girl with feeding and eating problems who has Down syndrome, but we're not saying here is a Down syndrome child. No. Right. And that's a really important thing. Yeah. You don't feel that they're linked specifically because there are a lot of children with Downs of her age who'd be eating merrily. Yeah. Okay, cool. All Those of her peer group eat beautifully. Mm. This problem makes you feel what? Oh, restricted in a lot of ways, and um, I have let you know also the feelings of that I've let her down that I didn't tackle it sooner. Mm -hmm. So and, uh, certainly a failure to some extent. Mm -hmm. um, I should have tackled it sooner. Yeah. Can I? Once, sorry, you carry on. But can Tani I, has asked Bridget to prepare Erin's usual lunch of baby so porridge sit. mixed with fruit puree, so that she can observe the full extent of the problem. Tani wants Bridget to encourage Erin to feed herself. You want to feed yourself, Erin? Wanna give it a try? Oh. Yes, nice, isn't it? Can you pick up the spoon and feed yourself? You wanna give it a try? No. <gasps> you wanna give it a try? Clever girl. Go on. Okay. You managed to touch it. You can try and touch it again. <laughs> Get on with it, woman. <laughs> yes, sweetheart. Want me to do it? There's a girl who's gonna need staff when she's older. Yes. You? Here. Yeah. <laughs> Erin, I have been accused of treating them differently and I, I know that I do. I am soppier over Erin. Because? I just feel sorry for her. I feel sorry for her that she, she, she didn't turn out to be the way she'd want to be probably when she's older. I think one day she'll hate having Down syndrome. Doesn't matter now, but it will matter and I think she'll hate it one day. I mean, people will say to me, oh, lovely, she'll get a job one day, she can work out the checkouts or something. I'm like, no, <laughs> my daughter does. I'm not going to work at the checkout. But that isn't what I wanted, you know. Makes uh, you really sad, this, isn't it? Really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, it isn't what I wanted when I was pregnant. I didn't want to do it. No. The greatest achievement in her life would be to work at the checkout. Not that there's wrong with working at the checkout, but, you know. You want, you want her to have more choice? Yeah. I mean, I know she won't remember this time of her life, but I will. And this will be the time where she was accepted by everybody, you know. Oh, sweetheart. Because <laughs> that's going to change. It's going to change. She won't be accepted by everybody. And the world will judge her. Mm. Cause just because of what she looks like. She's so unaffected by it. But nobody else will see that. They'll see your funny little eyes, but no. I'm gonna get your tissue. You've had enough. See if you, you can want some more. Can you... Do you want some more? No. Okay. You did well. With two families already in the house, Tanya is getting a clearer idea of the challenge she's facing this week. But there's still one more family to arrive the Fallons. Ready? Here we go. You find the blue steps. Tiverton in Devon is home to animal lovers Sue and Mike Fallon and their two daughters Emma and Sophie. But not everyone in the family shares their love of fur and feathers. The main problem we have is with Emma, where from a very young age she's not want to be near animals. And that's touching, that's hearing them, it's just being around them. Size makes no difference to Emma. Big or small, she's terrified of them all. There's definitely trauma there when the, when the animals are present, and especially when they're coming up to Emma or Sophie. Um, it's OK when they can kind of control it, when the animals are either in a cage or a pen, but when they're sort of coming towards them, they really do freak out. Just interested in the food, that's all. She knows there's food. Come up here, then. Come up here. Oh, there we go. Keen to encourage Emma to enjoy animals, the family take regular trips to petting zoos and farms. It's quite noticeable when we're somewhere like Pennywell Farm, 
and there's a child that's a lot younger than her and they're quite comfortable with sheep standing next to them and, and feeding lambs and things like that and they're generally having fun um, and Emma's not. Emma's anxiety with animals has meant the family has had to say goodbye to their much-loved pets. Did you used to like the cat? Do you remember Cookie? No, I didn't like it when I was little. No? Why is that then? Why didn't you like Cookie? Because probably I didn't like them at first. Initially, I think I was I was a little bit angry that she reacted in the way she did, but, but probably because I thought it was an attention-seeking thing, and now I feel it, it really is a phobia or, or has developed into a phobia. No, don't let me see it! We've like got radars, we, we're spotting the animals ahead of us. And then in some ways, are we making it, you know, I think we're concerned that are we making it an issue because it's like, right, there's a dog over there, we've got to sort this out. But it's a sort of a cycle that's getting very difficult to break. Yeah. He's going to yeah. walk straight, Paul. Yeah. Oh, sorry, lady. With Emma's frequent outbursts, younger sister Sophie is starting to copy her. It's within Emma. She's done it since she was tiny and has this, doesn't like the fur. Sophie's just copied it. So over the time, we've stopped doing things that we've enjoyed doing, which is going out, you know, with the horses, going up to the farm where we've got friends, having animals at home. We've just stopped it all because it's just, it's just too difficult. There's some more children, look. Oh, Paul. <laughs> I can't get in. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hi, Paula. 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 Yes. Sue. Hiya, Sue. Mike. Hi, Mike. Sophie. <laughs> And Emma. 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 And I guess they probably just go off, Bridget. Hello, Bridget. Emma. Emma and Emma. Sophie. Where are the fishes? Here, look. Fish. Wow. Look. Oh. Look. Is this a nice orange one? Come, Come on, look. Play down there. There's a big orange one up there. Well, the third and final family of the week are in, the Fallons, with quite an unusual problem. Um, Dad, Mike, Mum, Sue and daughters Emma and Sophie and Emma is phobic of animals, almost all animals, other than, thank goodness, your fish. It's a, a very interesting problem and one that I've treated a lot in the community but never in this house. Is she quite young to have a phobia at four and a half? When, when, can, it, when can it strike? With children who have a simple phobia, which is what Emma has, she is phobic of a specific set of stimuli, and in her case, animals. Usually it tends to appear around four or five. Now, what I know is that um, with Emma it's been around for much longer, but I think it's now really hitting its peak at her age, um, and it causes catastrophic thinking, a huge anxiety response, both psychologically and physiologically, which then reinforces the belief of that person that what it is they're faced with is a danger and a threat to them, even though in reality it isn't. <laughs> That was Bridget Scott much is playing with Emma and Sophie Fallon outside. Tanya is keen to address Emma's problem and its treatment with her parents. The key, the key thing for me is working with you, right? Because you'll be taking her away from here, and I won't be coming with you. So the key thing for me is looking at you, your behaviour, your responses, and your understanding of it. Um, with a child who has a huge fear, their instinct will be just to avoid. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So the only way to kind of combat that is to place the child in front of their feared object. Mm. It's going to be quite an interesting week mm. in terms of what we can achieve. Yeah. In my dream, you know, we will be somewhere quite far up a hierarchy mm. of exposure with her. But mm -hmm. it's, it's how much you're prepared for that and mm -hmm. how much Emma feels sh she can mm. do that. And I think mm. it's going to be a real sort of suck it and see mm. kind of job. Yeah. yeah. And I think we would very much... We would be, I, well, I'd be led by Emma, in, mm. in a sense. Right. Mm. That would if, be a problem then. <laughs> oh, OK. If, if, we, if she leads us, then we'll get nowhere. Oh, OK, fine. All right, then. Well, you know, I don't no, know. I we, think... We've come into it, you know, I think pretty open-minded. Yeah. I mean, obviously, you know, we don't want to see Emma too stressed. She will um, be this week. Well, you know, we're going to have to discuss have that. To. Absolutely. To, you know. I would never do anything that would cause your child any 
distress that would cause long-term mm -hmm. problems. Mm. Right. But when you're dealing with children who are anxious, they will be anxious mm -hmm. and they will become di distressed. And part of the process of change is helping a child understand mm -hmm. that, mm. experience it, mm -hmm. be in the situation and experience it go down. Mm. You will probably feel quite anxious mm -hmm. this week. Okay. Mm. And the key for me is that the only way she's going to stop feeling anxious is if you don't feel anxious. Mm. Right. Do you think of yourselves as anxious people? Um, I probably do get anxious at times, yeah. Um, what sorts of things make you anxious? Um, <laughs> dogs running at me, I believe. <laughs> really? Yeah. To you? Yeah. yeah. Even if Emma wasn't there? Yeah. Well, they bloody bite you, <laughs> don't they, occasionally? They bite me. <laughs> yeah. I've been bitten a lot of times, actually. So you or... inhabit a similar space to Emma? Yeah. Not in the same way, but... Not, but... No, not to the same degree. And I, I suppose because I can work out for myself a lot better the situation or the possible situation, whereas Emma, it's just it's black and white for Emma. Mm. There's a dog or there's not a dog. Whereas yeah. Whereas I can work it out a bit more yeah if on a scale of naught to ten now having this chat with me yeah where would you say your anxiety is pretty pretty high probably about eight say, mm, yeah six or seven yeah so you're a little less anxious I think so I don't know. is that generally how it would be would you say you're the more anxious of the two of you or it depends what we're dealing with probably if we're yeah. dealing with this i'd say i was the l less anxious <laughs> but but that's easy to say, isn't it? Really, yeah. I don't know. It'd be interesting to see. So what eight? That's kind of high. What, what is just it the whole experience, just the whole thing of yeah. tackling a uh, you know an anxiety or phobia like Emma. So the whole thing I'm giving a kind of eight, really. I will just say to you that um, as far as simple phobia go, simple phobias go, and mm. that's what Emma has a mm -hmm. simple phobia, which is just a particular group of stimuli in yeah. her case animals. Um, the only phobias that are known to be inherited or mm. somehow kind of you could be born with, if you like, yeah. are injection and blood phobias. Mm. So the learning aspect of this will be for both of them. Yeah. Somehow along the way, she has learned to be anxious and phobic of animals. Right. So we just need to try and think a bit about that and mm -hmm. look at how that could be. Mm -hmm. So it's not as if there's something inside her which was always there mm -hmm. that we just right. kind of need to change. Mm -hmm. It's something that's evolved over time right. mm -hmm. and needs to be unlearned in a way, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. just to give you a slightly okay. different way of thinking about it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is this quite upsetting, kind of a bit kind of freaky, a bit sort of, what are we doing yeah, to our poor look. child? A bit. We've, because it's going to be about us too, and you know, like our, in a sense, our, not our failures, but kind of. Do you of, feel you've failed her? Are you going to set me off now? <laughs> oh, I need to know this. I'm really sorry. You I don't can. Feel you've failed Emma, though. I'm so sorry to don't upset you. you, but I feel there's a huge amount of emotion behind this problem, and obviously that's what I need to see because that's what I think is very core to to it. Listen, let me say, I'm a mother, I've got two children, and right. I know exactly that, the guilt that one feels every day, but I think when you have a child who has a problem that you just can't solve, and you see that they're frightened, it must break your heart sometimes, absolutely break your heart. It's a new week at the House of Tiny Tearaways, which means three new sets of parenting dilemmas for Dr Tanya Byron. Single parent Paula McLeod is struggling with her daughter Kira, who's six. Kira's increasingly aggressive behaviour and bossy demands are making life in the McLeod household a misery. Three-year-old Erin Scott refuses to eat anything other than baby porridge mixed with fruit puree. Sole parent Bridget is frantic with worry about her severely restricted diet. Mike and Sue Fallon have come to the house because their four and a half year old daughter Emma is terrified of animals and her anxiety is beginning to transfer to her younger sister Sophie. This is stopping the family enjoying their country life to the full. Still to come. I ate that lady, I ate everything in this house and I ate everything in London. Take this. Okay, oh, come here. Come here. <laughs> You. Okie dokie. Okie dokie. Okie dokie. 
knees bend. Arm stretch. Roll, roll, roll. roll. <laughs> To see it firsthand the extent of Emma's animal phobia, Tony has arranged for the Fallon family to meet Raj the guinea pig and Chelsea the rabbit. Hello, Chelsea. Hello, Albino, yes. So how are you? How are you? How are you? Emma's younger sister Sophie has been brave enough to step inside the pen. Will this be enough to encourage Emma to do the same? Yeah. I'll tell you what, if you put your hand on top of my hand, look, can you see Chelsea's fur? Can you try to stroke the fur on my fingers? Love a girl. Is it soft? Soft, isn't it? Let's come and stand in here. And the bottom But my friend Carol is going to hold them. They're not going to be put down. So you come in with me. I want to come in too. Just one minute, darling. We'll do it one at a time, shall we? Yeah. I'll let go. We'll watch. Right. Right. Hold my hand, sweetie pie. Hold my hand, Carol. Can you go over there if that's all right? No. No, sorry. No, nothing's going to happen. Nothing is going to happen. And Chelsea's going to. Eat some leaves up there. Let's see if Chelsea can just go for a little run up there. Yeah, down. yeah. Just you, no, darling, don't stay with me. It's, I promise. No, you stay with me. Just have a little look. Have a little look. Oh, it flew. No, oh, no it's all right, darling. It's all right. It's all right. Look, 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 look. Just look where he is. Look where he is. Look where he is. And I'm holding you here. Look at that. And do you know what Chelsea's saying? I thought you were my friend. I thought you were my friend. Why don't you want to stand here and look at me? And your face is going grumpy. Should we just smile at Chelsea so if Chelsea doesn't feel sad? Good girl. Look at that, look at that. It's all right, Chelsea's just there. It's all right. He's got an itchy foot. Has he got an itchy foot? He has. He's licking his foot. Well, let's hope he doesn't have an itchy bum. <laughs> that wouldn't be very nice, would it? No, that wouldn't be very nice. Now, listen, stay here because you're doing very well and nothing bad is going to happen because rabbits don't do bad things. Nothing bad is going to happen, okay? At all. Because I won't let it. And Carol is my friend and she told me she was going to bring her nicest bunny rabbit to come and say hello to you. Okay? All we're going to do now is take one step like this. One. And stop. Don't take two. Do not take two steps. Do not take two more steps. Take two more steps. No, it's no. alright, it's alright. Hey, hey, hey. Do you know what's really scary about that? It's just that it jumps and runs, isn't it? Actually, do you know what I think Chelsea is saying? Please, can I come and play with you? That's what I think. I'm going to get out. Yeah. I'm not going to get out yet. No. 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 Oh, look, <laughs> Chelsea's trying to escape. <laughs> Chelsea's trying to. Stay here, darling. No. I'll sit down. You can come in in a minute. Come back in. Come on. Come on, come back in. Oh, it's fun in there. I'd like to be in there. You Emma, it's in. a rabbit. It can't hurt you. Come Oops. on, look, it's fun in there. Shall I go in? Oops. You come in with me. Oops. Does, Does the rabbit get therapy afterwards? <laughs> <laughs> I've seen pretty much what I need to see, actually. Okay, but, on. I mean, if you oh, want to just kind of hang out and say goodbye, yeah. maybe finish it on Good something quite me. positive, yeah. sort of sure. a stroke sure. and a thank you very much, right. so it ends in a this went really well. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm going to see if anybody sure else like wants to. to come out, so I'll just go and get them quickly. <laughs> cool, All right, then. Right, see you then, in a minute. Emma, we've got goodbye. to say goodbye oh, to Chelsea, yeah? Well, come on. have a little pat on him. Yeah, yeah, you could, yeah. yeah. Have a little pat, Chelsea. Come and have a pat. Come on, because Good he'll girl. feel left out otherwise. Oh, she will. There you are. Okay. Stroke his ears. So really Say bye, Chelsea. Just push have his ears. Have a lovely up. night. Have a lovely night. Have a lovely bye. sleep. Bye -bye. Sleep tight. <laughs> Let's put him on there. That's it. Oops. Right. So sweet. Let's see his ears. Yeah, they're so cute. Yeah. She can't see the rabbit then. The others can come and see. I'll take Erin out and you can explain to her why she's not seeing the rabbit because she bit you. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, Mum. Don't 
look like me again, Kira. Right, you coming to watch the children? No. Come on. No, because I don't get a go. No, you don't. <laughs> and do you know why? <laughs> Kira? No! For our three families, it's their first dinner time together in the house. Tanya is observing Bridget Scott and her three-year-old daughter Erin, who refuses to feed herself. Okay, I'll use this one then, shall I? That's the extent to which it goes. That's why I had to bring this bowl and spoon. So this is that's your spoon. You use that one then. Can you give it a try? You use this one then. But you never insist, you never no. push it hard. Oh, okay. um, as soon as she says no, you'll kind of give it. At home I would do more, but I, I kind of thought that you had done something. Well, um, now I need to get her some food yeah. in. Sure. So that she doesn't okay, sure. go to bed hungry. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> sure. It would be nice to see how far you go, just from my point okay. of view. That, that, would be, that would help me a lot. Erin, <laughs> do you want to use that spoon? Yeah. I'll use this one. No! Yeah. It's the same yeah. food. Erin? No. Okay. Want some more? Okay, how about you get her to hold your hand while you do it so she gets the sort of feeding. Do you want to help, Mummy? Yeah. No, I just need your help, Erin. Hold, hold, hold Mummy's thumb. Erin? Just hold my thumb. Can you hold my thumb? Give me five. Give me five. Uh, That's attractive, Erin. I am. Yeah. Yeah. Just hold my hand. Yeah. We'll hold this thing together. Like this. One. Good girl. Oh, very good girl. Just take a little bit. So now what? <laughs> just carry on. Finish it off as you would normally, or what you would normally do, or would you? She, you would just stop now. Well, she doesn't normally refuse it because I never normally force an issue, so... OK, we'll just kind of relax it down a bit and see if you can chill it out a bit and then get her more relaxed and then try again. And take the silver spoon out, that might be part of the problem, mightn't it? Sit down, we can chill. Sit down. 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 Sit
you know what you're trying to eat? Yes. Sit down. Erin, no. sit down, please. Very hard, no, <laughs> sit down. Sit down. No, we're waiting for Tyler to finish. No. Sit down. Want some more? Do you want some more, sweetheart? No. No, okay. Oh, yeah. Can I know, stop? It's up to you. You've got to do what you want to do. Uh, well, she won't eat anymore. There's no point just needing us to check. Uh, Why? Because <laughs> what's the point? You're very cross. Well, you know, she's not going to eat. So. Uh, that, can, can, I, can we just have a chat on the sofas, Bridget, if that's all right? If, if you could just kind of hang out here and watch the kids. Is that all right? Is that all right? Is that all right? Yeah? All right. Yeah, they're very good children. Very well behaved. Very well behaved. Let's sit down. You're very cross with me. With you? I feel that you're getting quite angry and wound up. And Oh, not with you, though. It's fine if you are, because no. I've, I've <laughs> intervened, and then what's happened is it's left her not eating. No, not at all. No, I didn't think that we'd come here and that it would all, you know, sh you would just go and she would suddenly start eating. Yeah. No, I knew that there'd be, you know, a, a hard time to go through. No, I'm not cross with you at all. Hard? Yeah, I just don't understand it. I'm not asking you to stick a knife into her eyes or something. I'm asking you to just mm. feed herself. But you like things to just happen. Yeah. That's in your mm. personality. Mm. So you just do it and get it done and yeah. move on. So she's quite a challenge for you in that way then. Mm. I just can't see it ever changing. Yeah, I was such an easy child. He's such an easy child. I would say jump and he'd say how high. Prior to your children, you're a very successful career woman. You've yeah. kind of done a lot with your life. You're really intelligent. You've mm. just got things done. So this for you is an intensely frustrating experience. Why cannot I do something as simple yeah, as getting married? Uh, what I can't understand either is why I'm just such a friggin' failure at it. I mean, why didn't I sort it out long ago? Why? You know, why didn't I see it coming, you know, that it was becoming so ingrained? And what do you think the answer to that is? I've no idea. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why I didn't see it. I mean, obviously I saw it coming, but I really thought for a while it would sort itself out. And then suddenly it was so much time had passed. There's obviously reasons why. I just don't know what the reasons why. That really irritates me. I know everything. <laughs> can't be perfect. And the more you get irritated with yourself, the more wound up you'll be at the meal time, the less she'll eat. She, I thought I knew everything until Miss Madam came along. Then possibly she's the best thing that could have ever happened to you. Yeah. She's a challenge. But I do worry sometimes that it happened because I didn't care enough. I, I don't think you could care any more for your daughter. I think you care about her so massively. I think, I think she has really um, suffered because I looked inward for too long. And and sort it out my own. She doesn't look like a child who suffered. No, too. not dreadfully. <laughs> but I think it's very easy to project a lot of things onto our children. Yeah. And I think when you have a little child who has an extra chromosome number twenty-one, yeah. I think that it makes it possible for you as a parent to put all sorts of guilt and sadness yeah. onto that child. Yeah, but I definitely took my eye off the ball. Who doesn't? And dropped it. Right, come on now, story, quick story and it's bed, please. Get in my bed. Come on then. It's bedtime for the six children in the house of Tiny Tearaways. I can't stop laughing. Kira. My dick is fine, good as fine. <laughs> I'm not going to read a book in a minute. Come on, you're wasting my time. Come on. Once upon a time, there was a school with lots of children. It was playtime. Ball boy. They were playing with the ball and the bikes. <laughs> and the teacher came to watch that they were all behaving themselves. <laughs> you're, spoil on. you're spoiling it for our Come Kira. On, then. Come on, I'm waiting. No, you're not for listening you. to me. I'm fine. <laughs> Oh, don't start. Four and a half year old Emma Fallon is sharing her new bedroom with her younger sister Sophie. Right, 
to be. But Sophie, are you going to listen to me? Right. When we get up and when it's morning, can you not wake me up? We're going to have a lion in tomorrow because I've got a busy day again. Alright? Yeah. Do you understand? Yeah. Because I understand. Do you? Sophie, we're supposed to be going to sleep. Sophie! Following her emotional dinner time, Bridget yeah. Scott settles Erin and Tyler with a bedtime story. Erin, can, can you, you find the find, boat? Can Aaron. you find the speedboat? Not that one, it's somewhere over there. Well, that's there. Don't be so pedantic. It's she's so only weird. little. Yeah, but she, that's exactly the same. Just chill out. No, I mean, four boats. Yeah. And 200 people. <gasps> 200? And, um, three balls. Got it right. And only one bat and one kite. But while the rest of the house settles for the night, the McLeod's bedroom is still far from calm. At home, Paula struggles to handle six-year-old Kira's aggressive and demanding behaviour, and bedtime is one of the most challenging parts of her day. I'm waiting. I'm not reading another yeah. story. You copy what I'm saying. I can't think what Please. I'm saying. No. 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 Stop it. No! Go away! Go away from me! Fuck it, we will! Go away then! Come on, Aaron, let's go to your bedroom. Kira! <laughs> read it! Well, you take it in your room and read it. No, I can't read it! No, I'm not! Promise no, it's good. too late to promise, Kira. No, I'm going like this, then. Fine, go like that. No, Mum, do you read story? No, you've I pushed me, you've made it. it. No.
tomorrow on the House of Tiny Tearaways. What does that make Kira feel like? Sad. <laughs> All I could think about it wasn't for me, but I was going to die. It was for my girls. But they were going to love me.